Hey there, it's Sydney with Tastefully Frugal, and in today's video, I am so excited to share with you the new PYD Life 2-in-1 Tumblr Press. Now, if you've been following Tastefully Frugal for a while, you know how much I absolutely love making sublimation tumblers. It is by far my favorite project to make. Um, if you attended sublimation camp, you saw how I made sublimation tumblers in a convection oven. And for a long time, I really thought, you know, I could get by making them in the convection oven. They turn out beautiful. It's really easy to use. It was super affordable. Um, I didn't think that I needed a tumbler press. Um, but PYD Life uh, asked if they could send me a tumbler press to review. And of course, I was going to say yes. How could I turn down a tumbler press? And I have to say, I am so impressed with this tumbler press. It makes making tumblers, um, cups, and mugs so much easier. If you are looking to sell cups or tumblers or mugs, um, I definitely think investing in a tumbler press is well worth your time and money. You can make three or four tumblers in a time um, in a tumbler press in a time it takes you to make one in a convection oven. So in this video, we'll go over um, some of the differences between making a tumbler in a tumbler press versus a convection oven, like what um, the setup supplies, things like that are. Obviously, we'll go over time and temperature settings um, for the different types of tumblers. I'll go over how to um, understand the control panel, how to set your time and temperature. Um, I'll show you how to switch out the two um, different uh, wraps for these, and we'll go over how to make the tumblers. But as you can see, there is a huge variety of cups and tumblers and mugs that you can make with this mug press. Uh, mug press. I'm so used to saying that with the cricket, but with this tumbler press, and that is one of the things that I absolutely love the most about it. When you think about trying to sell something uh, um, or sell your projects, a lot of times people are saying, oh, well, the market is already saturated. Everybody is doing 20 ounce skinny tumblers. How do I make myself stand out from the crowd? Well, if you have a two in one um, tumbler press, not only can you make the 20 ounce tumblers, but you can make 16 ounce tumblers, you can make 30 ounce tumblers, you can make frosted mugs, you can make the glass cups, you can make frosted glass cups, you can make water bottles, you can make mugs. And a lot of these you can do two at once. So again, the time it takes to make your mugs and your cups is cut down tremendously. So if you are wanting to start a sublimation business, um, definitely look into getting this tumbler press because it does a whole lot more than other tumbler presses do. And it's super easy to use. I'll show you all of that in a bit. Um, another thing that I really like about this tumbler press is how cool, not like neat, but how temperature cool it is. This doesn't get hot. This doesn't get hot. The only thing that really gets hot is up here and then the wrap itself. So if you're crafting around kids, um, or if your kids come in and help in the craft room like mine do, I don't have to worry about them rubbing up against it or touching it. Or if you're clumsy like me, you don't have to worry about if you put your arm here, getting burnt. That for me, it gives me a lot of peace of mind um, when I, like I said, when the kids come in and try to help, I don't have to stress about them getting burnt. So. Let's go ahead and get into the tutorial. I am going to first talk about how to use the control panel. I'll show you how to switch between Fahrenheit and Celsius, how to set your time and temperature and a few other things. Um, and then we'll go over how to switch out the wraps. Um, we'll go over how to set pressure, how to know how much pressure you need for your cups and tumblers. And of course, we will also make a few uh, cups and tumblers in this video. Now, if I were to make every single cup that you can in this cup or in this uh, tumbler press, it would take forever. We're talking like a four hour long video and that's not going to happen. Um, but I did write a blog post that has uh, more information on the tumbler press. I go over time, temperature, and pressure, time, temperature, and pressure settings for all of these ones that I made, as well as the other tumblers and cups um, that you can use with this tumbler press. In a bit, we'll also talk about the extra supplies that you'll need, um, things that you absolutely need, things that are just helpful. Um, and I have all of those in the blog post as well. So let's go ahead and talk about this control panel first. So the first thing you want to do is turn your tumbler press on. The power switch is on the side. And you'll look here, it kind of looks like my screen might be damaged. That is just a protective film. So go ahead and pull that off your screen if you like, if you have like any bubbles or things like that. Let me show you how to set your time and temperature. So you'll just hit the set button once and this uh, first time will allow you to adjust the temperature. So you can press the up or down buttons. And then if you hit set again, it will allow you to adjust the time. Time is in seconds, like with most heat presses. So 240 seconds is four minutes long. 
And if you hit set a third time, it'll just go back to, uh, to the main screen where it has your countdown for your temperature or your rising temperature. If you wanna change from Fahrenheit to Celsius, go ahead and hold set for like five seconds. Press the down arrow to get to Celsius and press the up arrow arrow to get back to Fahrenheit and then just hold set again for like five seconds and it'll go back to um, your main screen. It also has a counter to show you how many tumblers you have pressed. Next, let's show you how to uh, change the wraps inside the tumbler. So the first thing you want to do is unscrew the uh, wrap from the control panel. It is really tight, so take your time. And when you're pulling it out, make sure that you're pulling on the metal and not on that white rope, because if you pull on the rope, you could damage your press. Then you're just going to want to unscrew the screws at the top. There's no um, special way to do this. Just unscrew them as you go. Mine were all finger tight, um, but if you find one that's really tight, you can use a uh, wrench to get it off, but I didn't have any issues. And what's really neat is your this two-in-one tumbler press comes with some extra screws. So if like one falls off the table and you can't find it, there are extras included, which is nice. Um, then once we have it out, we are just going to go ahead and load the new wrap into the machine. Make sure that you load it so that that control panel cord, it can be connected to the control panel side. And you'll see that there's a little um, indent down at the bottom. Just make sure to line that up with the bottom um, of the control panel, press it in, and then again, just uh, tighten that in. Um, tight so it's on there. Now let's go ahead and uh, I want to show you the difference between the two wraps. So here you have on the left the 30 ounce tumbler wrap and on the right the 20 ounce. So you can see there's quite a bit of difference on the inside, but really that's the only difference. When you stand them up, they're the same height. So it's just the inside that is different. They have the same, um, the same parts to go to the control panel. So your width is really the only difference. Let's talk about some of the other supplies that you'll need to make tumblers with your tumbler press. Obviously, cups or tumblers are a necessity. Um, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, there is a huge variety of different styles and sizes of cups that you can use with this two-in-one tumbler press. In the blog post that I've linked in the video, I have a full list of all the ones I tried. So I tried some that worked, some that didn't work, so that uh, blog post has a list of all of them, and I'll be linking um, all the supplies I'm talking about in the description of this video as well. So you'll want to make sure that whatever um, cups, tumblers, mugs you're using are rated for sublimation. So if it's like a mug from the dollar store that you're trying to sublimate on, that's not going to work because it needs to have a special coating. So make sure that you are using um, cups, tumblers, or mugs that are made for sublimation. Um, I do have linked uh, in the description of the video, not only these two that I have here, but all the ones we've used, as well as a few of my other favorite brands that you can get on Amazon and a few other stores as well. So once you have your cups and tumblers, next you're going to need sublimation paper. So PYD Life has their own sublimation paper that works great. It does not have a lot of blow off, which I really like. It makes it so you don't have to worry about um, if you happen to forget to have butcher paper, which we'll talk about in just a second. If you forget to put that on, you don't have to stress as much about having that design come onto your tumbler press. So I like the PYD Life um, brand that I really like, um, and also the A-Sub sublimation paper works great too. Um, I just mentioned butcher paper. You do want to have butcher paper. You're going to put that, once you put your design um, on the sublimation paper, put that on your cup or tumbler, then you're going to wrap it with, sub, uh, with this butcher paper, and that's going to protect the inside side of your press from getting any of the ink on that. So I like the Cricut brand because it comes in sheets. Um, you can get rolls, but make sure that it is butcher paper for sublimation. If you just get like the pink butcher paper or butcher paper for like butchers, like wrapping meat, things like that, it has a wax on it and that will um, come off on the press. So you don't want to use that. Make sure that you're getting butcher paper, specifically the Cricut brand or butcher paper made for sublimation. Next, you do need to have heat resistant gloves. Um, whether you're turning your tumblers or not, when you take them out of the oven, they are very, or not the oven, the press, they are very, very hot. So get yourself a good pair of heat resistant gloves. You can use, um, these are made for like um, curling irons or straighteners, um, but this I actually got with my um, tape dispenser, which I absolutely love. Um, this is such a cool tool to have, especially if you do a lot of sublimation projects. Um, you do need to have sublimation tape. That is another necessity, um, but I've linked this tape dispenser in the description of the video, and it comes with the dispenser, with tape, and with the gloves. Now this blue tape is tape from PYD Life, 
and again, I absolutely love it. It's very similar to the Cricut tape. It cuts beautifully. It's thicker, so it's easier to use. So I can't recommend the PYD Life prod products enough. They are so good. Um, and then the last thing you're going to need is just a mat. You can use a hot pad. I just use an old Easy Press mat. Um, you're going to put this on your table, and then you'll put your tumblers or your cups, your mugs, whatever you're pressing, on them when they come out of the press. Um, put them on here to cool so they don't burn um, your table or anything like that. So we've talked about the supplies we need. We've talked about how to change out the different sizes. We've talked about the control panel. Let's get into making some cups and tumblers. So I'm not going to show you how to make every single one that I tried here because that would take a very long time, even if we sped up the process. So I'm just gonna, going to show you a few quick tutorials. I will have um, here on the video all the time and temperature settings for the one I'm doing, but if you want a full rundown of time and temperature settings um, and pressure, how much pressure you need for those, check out the blog post that's linked in the description of the video as well for all of that. And I'll have more videos coming out in the next few weeks and months going into more detailed explanations on how to use um, or how to make different tumblers, each different size in the tumbler press. Okay, let's talk about adjusting our pressure for our cups or tumblers. So I'm gonna put a cup in here. And by the way, you wanna do this when your um, machine is completely cooled off. So we're gonna put this in here. As you can see, I cannot fully close it. It's not closing. So you're going to want to, if it is too tight to close, then we need to open it up a little bit more. So we're gonna move these closer to the inside. And you wanna make sure that they're the exact same width, these two. Sometimes you can get them, well, most of the time you can get them at the same time, but if you have to turn one more than the other, just make sure that you have the same width in between the two. So then when we press this one, so see, it's getting better, but I can't, it doesn't easily close. So if it's, if you were to press like this, you would worry about your cup either breaking or getting too much pressure. So you might get lines from the heat tape or your sublimation paper if you did it that tight. So we're gonna just tighten it or tighten it up just or loosen it, not tighten it, loosen it up a little bit more. Let's see. Okay, now let's try it. So we're getting closer, but you still see that's pretty tight and it jumps. We don't want it to do that. You'll have the same problem with um having maybe having your uh, heat tape stick to it and pull off if you have the frosted ones it can pull off some of that frosting so we'll just tighten it up and this is again why you want to do this when this um, when your machine is off because if you left your cup sitting here it would start cooking for all the time that we're using which we don't want it to do so I think we're good here so you can see how this closes smoothly but also you want to make sure that your cup can't move so you can see here I can't really move the cup so and it opens up smoothly so that is that is when you know that you have the pressure right is when you can close it easily with one hand you open it and it doesn't pop open and then when it's closed make sure that you can uh, or that you can't I should say move your cup that's how you know that you have the right amount of pressure so the first cup we're going to do is one of these glass tumblers. They are super trendy, but you want to prep this the same way you would with doing it in a convection oven, wiping it down with a lint roller, and then lining your design up um, on your tumbler. Now for a seamless design, when you put it on there, it might look like it's too small uh, or like too short, but I'll show you that this is the perfect size. And what I like to do when I'm working with these glass cups is look on the inside of the cup when I'm lining it up to make sure that everything is lined up where it needs to be and make sure there's no overlap. And then I'll just adjust the tape, like pull the pieces closer together if I need to, or if I need to cut it down like a quarter of an inch or something like that. Um, but you can see this tape dispenser makes it really easy to add more tape um, if you need to. And then my number one tip for making seamless tumblers is run your fingernail along that seam like five or six times. I promise it will give you seamless results. So we'll go ahead and load this into the tumbler press. You'll want to do it seam side up and we're gonna press it at 360 for a total of 240 seconds. I set the timer for 120 because I'm going to rotate it right here. Um, make sure you have your heat resistant glove on and remember how I talked about sometimes forgetting to add the butcher paper, even I do it. So 
the, the reason I like this PYD life paper so much is you can see there's not a whole lot of blow off. Like you can see the design, but it's not coming through a ton and it doesn't ruin your wrap if you do forget the butcher paper like I do sometimes. Um, but once it's completely cooled, so let it cool for like three or four minutes, then you can remove your heat resistant tape and take a look at your cup. And this turned out absolutely beautiful. I love the design. I love how it works with the ombre pink. And let's see if we can find the seam. Um, let's see, where is the seam? You can see that that thumb trick makes it, the seamless numbers really work. You can kind of sort of see it there in the yellow and a little bit on the leaf, but it's, it's not the whole lot. Next, let's go ahead and do a 20 ounce um, skinny tumbler. I did adjust the pressure a little bit. I had my machine was cooled before I did that. And this one I'm going to set at 360 for 50 seconds. And then I'm going to rotate it at 50 seconds and do another 50 seconds. I did remember the butcher paper here, as you can see. Um, and then just make sure that you, once again, are doing the seam side up at first so you know um, exactly how much you need to rotate it. So if you're doing a skinny tumbler that had design a design only on one side, you would press it for 100 seconds just on the one side. But I did use the A sub paper here and you'll notice as I take it out, I'll show you with the butcher paper as well as without the butcher paper, there is a lot more blow off on this paper than there is with the PYD Life paper. So if you're like me and forget get to do um, your butcher paper sometimes, I definitely recommend using the A sub, or not the A sub, the PYD life paper. Um, it really is great. But the A sub is awesome too. As you can tell, you'll be able to see here um, that the colors are just as vibrant. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just, it does have a little bit more blow off. Okay, we're gonna do one last example. I want to show you a glass cup that only has a design on one side. So. You can see we only have the design on the one side. We'll put that side, the side with the design in, all the way down at the bottom and go ahead and close your tumbler press. So we're gonna do the same 360, but instead of setting it for 120 seconds, we'll set it for 240 seconds. Go ahead and open up your tumbler press when it's done. Um, again, you can see that that PYD Life Paper does not have a whole lot of blow off and then let it cool for three or four minutes. And then you can take your tape off and look at your design. You can see from the inside of the design, um, just like I looked at with lining up the design, if you're not sure if you've pressed it for long enough, check out the inside of your glass cups. If the colors are bright and vibrant on the inside, they're probably bright and vibrant on the outside. And you can see with having the proper pressure, you don't have to worry about any of that frosted color coming or the frosting coming off um, of your cup. But let's go ahead and take a look at some of the other cups that we made today. I know we covered a whole lot of information in this video, but I wanted to give you my full in-depth review of this machine because I do know that it's an investment, but it is totally worth it. So if you have any questions that I didn't answer for you, go ahead and leave them in the comments. Like I said, all of the products that I used in the video, all the supplies, all the cups, all the tumblers, and of course the press, I've linked in the description of the video, as well as all the designs that were used. I also have in the description of this video, a link to that blog post that goes into more details on using the tumbler press. Um, some frequently asked questions that I've gotten on Instagram and Facebook about not only this tumbler press, but using a tumbler press versus let's say a convection oven um, and some other things when you're making sublimation tumblers. So if you're new to sublimation tumblers um, or if this is something that you want to be able to easily and quickly refer back to, go ahead and bookmark that blog post um, because it has a lot of really helpful information and the YouTube video is linked in there as well. But if you like this video, I would love to have you give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to Tastefully Frugal for more cricket and sublimation tips, tricks, and tutorials. Have a great day.